Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to talk about type casting or type conversion within the C programming language, specifically around the idea of math operations. Okay, so we've just discussed uh, math operators like addition, subtraction, division, uh, remainder, etc. <clears throat> and usually, what we do is we try to make sure that the input arguments are the same data type as the output argument. So, if we're going to add an int to an int, the result will be an int or a double plus a double the result will go into a double <clears throat> however c does support operations on different data types and it has an automatic handling of this situation so, and the way that it does it is by through this process of data type promotion Okay, so when it does this, it actually converts the data type of an argument to another data type. And there's kind of two ways to think about it. One is automatic or what we call implicit type conversion. The other one is called explicit. So we'll start with automatic first. Automatic is where you don't do anything. You just you just add an int to a, to a float and you let C take care of it. Uh, explicit means you'll actually manually convert them, convert the types. But let's look at the explicit. So what it does is it promotes the data type to another data type uh, until both arguments in the expression match each other. OK, and the way the promotion works is this is a hierarchy showing how it promotes. So, for example, if you were going to add a character to an int, what it would do is it would say it would notice it would go, hey, man, you're you're adding a car to an int. We got to get these to be the same type. So what would it would do is it would take the car and it would convert it to an int. That way you'd have both arguments of type integer and then you could add them together. And so if you think about that, car is going to be an 8-bit unsigned decimal number that represents an ASCII code. So the promotion would essentially add 24 bits to the leading part of that data type to make it a 32-bit value. And so if you added it into a float, it would have to actually, uh, it would promote the integer all the way up to a float and it would actually have to it would actually have to convert the integer into a floating point number so it'd have to do a little conversion in there but this is implicit uh in c but it's very important because you need to understand what's going on behind the scenes okay all right so let's that's what i do it is to code along all right so here's what we're going to do i have my a couple shells here into the linux server and what i'm going to do is i'm going to change into the mod zero let's first of all let's take a look at what we got in here we have this folder called mod zero four underscore code along that's where we're kind of playing around with our our code for this module let me change into there i'm gonna say cd mod zero four i'm gonna hit tab to do an auto complete and now i'm in that directory and i can take a look what's in here there's our math testing from the last video and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a new uh C program file called type conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do this in uh, I'll do this in Vim, of course. <laughs> so I'll say type conversion dot C. Okay, so here's my here's my source code, and let's go ahead and create our standard comment header at the top. So we'll do a block comment and say uh, experimenting with type conversions. Okay, and since this is just coding along, we don't need a, a very detailed block header, even though in our homeworks and labs we do. All right, now let's go ahead and bring in the standard io.h header file, which brings us gives us the printf. And then let's start the shell for our main function. So let's go int main void open curly, come all the way to the bottom, return zero, and then close curly. And now let's come up here and we'll go ahead and save it. So I hit escape to go into normal mode in Vim. I hit colon to go into command mode and I hit W to write it. And now I've written my file in my second little window down here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm in my home directory. So I'm going to change into mod 04. And then I'm going to check out what's in here. And now I see my type conversion. OK, so that's what I've created. And let's go ahead and do a simple addition. So let's let's create three variables, a car, an int and a float. And then we'll add them all together and we'll store it uh, into a double. OK, and then we'll see how their conversions type actually work. OK, so I go C. Well, they're invisible, so it's. So C is a variable name and I'm going to initialize it with the ASCII character capital B. OK, so if you remember, which you should not remember this, 
<laughs> is this is hex 42 and that's equal to 66 decimal. Where did I get that? It's don't memorize that stuff. It's from the ASCII table uh, that you can Google or you can see in the last slide set. But basically this is a binary, eight bit binary code for this symbol in the American English language. Okay. All right. So I got one little fellow there, one little variable. Now let's, let's get an int going. We'll call it I for integer. And then we'll say 22, not even close, 22. And let's, let's do a float f and we'll call that 0 0.8 and then let's do a double and that's a sum and we won't initialize that and what we're going to do is this we're going to sum is equal to in i or excuse me c which holds a character plus i which holds an integer plus f which holds a float all right and now what is this going to work so the answer is it will work so what, let's print f and let's see what everything is so c equals and then i'm going to do a format specifier for the character which is percent c and that'll print the ascii symbol and then i'm going to print the input i so i'll say i is equal to and this is an integer so i'm going to do the format specifier percent d to print the integer in decimal and then i'll do f equals and i'll do percent uh f however let's go ahead and limit it to one decimal place okay so i'm going to do 0.1 for the precision all right and then i'm going to go uh, then I'll do the sum and the sum's going to be a double. So I'm going to say sum is equal to the format specifier for a double is percent long float. Now that one, that L looks extremely similar to a one, but you can kind of see it's a little different. It's really hard to tell. That's a common syntax error. The one has a, the one has the little part at the top that comes down to the left where the L is just goes flat. But you, if you see that, watch, I'll do this. I'll go uh, 0.1. So for one decimal place of the long float, notice the, notice the difference between those little fellas. This is a one and that's an L. Anyway, you'll, if you type it wrong, GCC will let you know. <laughs> okay, so then let's let's substitute in for C, D, or C, I, and F. So I'll go C, I, F, C, I, F, and then sum. Okay, now let's make this a little longer here so it doesn't wrap. And let's go ahead and save it. Now let's come down here and let's run it and make sure everything happens. Let's make sure everything's good first. And then we'll ex kind of explain what happened. So I'm going to go GCC type conversion and I'm going to go ahead and hit tabbed autocomplete. And now of course this guy, this is going to be a long one. So let's go ahead and go dash O type conversion. I auto completed and then I went and removed the uh, dot C. I go ahead and say, okay, all right, that did it. So now let's do it with wall or warnings all. And now we're good to go. So now if I go Sunny Holland, and then run this, Sunny Holland meaning look in this particular directory for the executable, I get C is equal to capital letter B, I is equal to 22 decimal, F is equal to 0 0.8 and floating point, and sum is 88.8 double. Okay, so it worked. What happened here was the following. Number one, it didn't change the value of C. What it did when I did the sum is it promoted it interimly or temporarily. So it took what C was right here and it converted it to the highest point, which was going to be in this situation, it had to get to a float plus a float plus a float. And then those were up to a double. So C did not get changed. It's that the temporary usage of C was promoted. Okay. And so if you look at this promotion thing, you started with a car, it's like, oh, this isn't the same as these other ones. So then it said promote to an int. Is it the same? Well, it's the same as I, but that, that F there isn't the same. So then it promoted C to it unsigned, then to a long int, then an unsigned long int, then to a float. And it's like, oh, I got it. And then it's like it started adding them together. So integer had to be promoted, unsigned, long, unsigned, that got to a float. And now you had a float plus a float plus a float. And then it looked at some and said, wait a minute, I'm a double. So then it promoted all of them to doubles. The end result was a double, which was 64 bits. So it did work and that's fine. Okay. All right. Let's do a nutty one. Okay. Let's do a, a crazy one that is going to have this huge conversion in it. Let me get right here. This huge conversion in it and just to see how it works. So this is just another example. So what we're going to do is say A is equal to Z divided by B plus B times X minus Y. Okay. This I over here, I don't know what that little fella is. I should have deleted it. <laughs> 
I got this from, uh, I should give credit where credit's due. So I got this from uh, Scalar Topics, okay? But this equation is what we're gonna code up right here. All right, so let me move this little fellow over here so we can see it. Uh, and, okay. So let me come down here, I'm gonna go. Doo -doo -doo. So this is, these are all new variables. So we can actually just start them up. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go int, b is equal to two. And then I'll say, uh, float, x is equal to 9.5 and then i'll say double y is equal to 10.5 and then i'll say long int and then i'll say z is equal to 50 and now what i'll do is this i'll come over here and i'll move these over so it's nice and nice and aligned nice look in here and i have an int of a float of a double and a long int integer 32 bits float is a floating point 32 bits double is a floating point 64 bits long int is an integer 64 bits okay now i'm going to assign this to two different uh output values a which is an int and then i'll do d which is going to be a double okay so i'll go double double <laughs> d. okay so here we are Bum, 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 bum. here we go line these up so it looks so nice and now let's do this nuttiest expression a is equal to Z divided by B plus B times X minus Y. Okay. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print the result. So let's print what A is. And A is an integer. So I'll say when stored as int, it is equal to, and I'll do the format specifier for D, put a return in there. And then the variable that I will substitute in is going to be A. Okay, now let's do this first and make sure that I don't have any typos, which I did. Yeah, he's print F. Okay, so I save that little buddy up. Let's compile this and then make sure it works. It's not happy about that. What's it complaining about here? Uh, line 14. Oh, that's from the prior example. <laughs> don't worry about that little guy. So that was the uh, D. Actually, hang on for a sec. What is that guy? Oh, we didn't use D. We didn't use D. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> so it's just a warning. So if I make sure that it can work without warnings all, it worked. So that's good. So let me clear this up and then let's let's run this program and make sure everything's cool. So it's like, okay, interesting. When stored as an int, it's 33. All right, now where did that come from? So here is this big expression and I coded it up just like it told me to do, just like the example said. And here's what really happened. First of all, you can see the order of precedence in here, right? So divide takes place before plus, uh, takes place before, or multiplied pl takes place before plus, and then plus and minus are kind of the last things that happen. So you're gonna have Z is what? It's a long int, so it's already in long int, and you're gonna divide it by B, which was an int, and it's like, okay, so these need to, B needs to be promoted to a long int, and the result is a long int. Okay, over here you've got B times X. So B is an int and X is a float. So you need to take B and promote it to a float. So you have float times a float and that becomes a float. And then over here you've got just Y, this I is in there, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's just straight up just a double. So you just leave it as a double. And then the next operation comes along and you're like, okay, you got a long int and a float. You got to promote the float to a long int. And then you got the double to a double. And finally the answer is a double. Okay. So the answer is 33.5. All right. So let's take a look at the answer, which we got, which was 33.5 or excuse me, as an integer, or excuse me, the answer is 33.5. Okay. As a double. Now we stored it as an int. So then what it did is it took all that value and it stuffed it into an int. And when that happens, you just remove, when you take a floating point or a real number and put it into an int, it just removes the decimal places. So that's why it's 33. Now let's come down here and let's do it the same exact thing, except let's store it into a double result. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into escape mode or normal mode by hitting escape. And I'm going to copy this line by going YY come down here and I hit the P key. And that means put okay so that allows me to do this i delete that and i say d and now i'm good now i'm going to copy this line i get i go escape to get into normal y y come down here p for put and now all i can do is come in here and i say i want to print d but it, d's a double right so i'm gonna come over here i need the format specifier for a double which is long float so 
long float. And now let's see what happens. So I come in here, I go boop, boop. Compile, let's get a compile with wall on, with warnings all, good, not nothing. And here we go, check it out. When stored as, a, and of course the int, I didn't update the int right here, so do, do, do. double. Save that little buddy, go ahead down here, GCC it, GCC with wall on, and then let's run it. Oh buddy, look at that, 33.5. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, now life is good. That was all automatic or explicit. We can also do this type conversion explicitly by manually converting them, okay? The way you do a manual type conversion is you put in parentheses the new data type you wanna to convert to, okay? And it will take whatever your original data type is, it will convert it to the new data type, but it will only do it temporarily when you make the assignment, it doesn't actually change the original variable. Okay, so let, let's just look at this really quick. So this is this is actually really cool. So let's say I do, I'm gonna have uh, an integer, which is out one, I'm gonna have a float called out two, and then I have a double called out three, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have a variable called in one, that's a float, let's say in one, and then I'll do an int, which is an, input called in two. Okay, so I just set up five different variables. And let's let's initialize in one to be uh, 3.14. Okay, so it's a real number. And then in two will be 22. Okay. All right, so let's save that buddy up. All right, now here we are. And now let's see what we can do with this explicit typecasting. First of all, let's do this, I'm going to go print f and I want to print the inputs. Okay, so in one equals a float format specifier into equals a integer decimal format specifier and then return. And the reason I want to do this is I want to make sure that the inputs don't get changed when I do these typecasts, these types conversions. So let's just, let me, let me make sure this works before we go too much further. So I GCC it, it's, it's complaining about all these unused variables, but that's okay. We can run it and just see what happens. So here we are in one equals 3.14000 into equals 22. Okay, so everything works. And so now let's do this, watch this. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say this. Let me make sure this is on the screen so you can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Out one, which is a type, let me make sure, let me drag this down a little bit. I wanna see it, is an integer, okay? If I wanted to assign in one to it, okay? In one is a float. I can manually convert that float into an int by simply doing parentheses int, and that would do it, okay? So now if I came along and said print f, and I wanted to look at out one, so out one equals, it should be an integer. So I'll do the format specifier for integer, and I'll do return, and then I'll say put in the variable out one in that format specifier. Let's see what happens here. So I go ahead and do that. It's still complaining about unused variables, but no errors. And look at what out one is. Out one is three, okay? Well, in one was 3.14. It dropped the 0.14 and made the assignment to out one. So I did this explicitly. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> let's do it again, let's do it again. Out two, now I'm gonna assign to out two, which is a float. Okay, so I need to convert my, I'm gonna convert uh, into, which is type integer, I'm gonna convert it to a float by doing that. So I say into, and then I'll do this. I'll say, uh, save that little buddy up, and I'm gonna go, come over here and go print F, and I'll say out two equals, now this should be a float. So I'm gonna do the format specifier for float, which is percent F, and I'll put a line return, and I'll say print the value of out two, see what that is. So then I come down here and I code, Pile that up. Let's get a wall on there. Less warnings. Nice, nice. Then I do the Sunny Highland. Sunny Highland. And now look at this thing. Okay, let me move this up a little bit. Out two is 22.00000. It's now float. Okay. And then here's what's even cooler is you can do this in a command too. So watch this one. I'll, I'll get this on the screen so you can see what I'm typing. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to come in here. I've got out three. Watch this. I'm going to come down here. Can't okay, go on on the same screen here. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna go out three equals, and I'm gonna do in one plus in two. 
Okay, but these this N1 is an integer. I'm gonna promote it explicitly to a double, and I'm gonna promote N2 explicitly. Well, I'm jumping all over it. Vim is going nuts today. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not Vim, it's me. <laughs> and there we got it. So I go print F, and then I say out three is equal to, now this is a double. So remember the format specifier for a double is long float. And then let's we'll line return. And then I'll say print in the value about three. And let's see, hey, you gotta just slow down and type here. Here we go, I'm gonna do this, GCC. Boom, look at that, 22.14. So it added these together and they're doubles. <laughs> okay, so you can do it implicitly and explicitly, but it is supported and it is very important to keep track if you're gonna do that because it makes a great deal of impact on your result. All right, that's it, nice work.